Well, Judge Hidalgo, Mayor Turner, thank you for joining us Sorry. today. You know, it, you can feel the sense of excitement in the room here as these brave men and women who have been caring for people with COVID all year long have been the first at Houston Methodist to receive their vaccines today. I've had many described today like Christmas morning, waiting for Santa's sleigh to arrive and then sitting at the top of the stairs while your parents won't let you down quite yet to open up the presents. But we've got the best gift of the year coming to us today because it is the beginning of the end of this terrible pandemic. And we together can get to that end if we all get vaccinated. So I am just thrilled that these brave men and women have gotten a chance to get this. I want to thank all of them. Let's give them a round of applause for everything they've done. They have been, they have been true, true heroes throughout this pandemic, and we're just delighted to get them vaccine. And Judge Hidalgo, Mayor Turner, thank you for all of the support each of you have provided um, to all of us in the community every step of the way through this last year. We've all been on speed dial with each other a little too much this year. I know we'll all be happy to move on. And together we can do this over the next six months if we all pledge to get vaccinated. Please do. It is safe. It is effective. You see these healthcare workers, these doctors, these nurses who are right off the bat saying, sign me up the second there's a vaccine available. It's a very exciting day for Houston. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Boom. Thank you so much, and Mayor, always, for your partnership. You, and I, I do have to tip out because we have a commissioner's court today, so I'm going to just jet out in a minute. But, but look, I want to thank um, every single healthcare professional in this room. I mean, these folks have been working so, so tirelessly. And these folks were exhausted already back in April and they fought through and then they saw another surge in June, July and they pushed through and so did their families. And now yet again, as the cases rise and the hospitalizations rise, they are there, they're quarantining in their own homes as we were discussing and they're fighting. And so I think it's important to acknowledge, just take a moment and acknowledge the incredible sacrifice and commitment and dedication that these folks have put in whatever their role has been and, and that of their families. I was talking to Dr. Shu over here a minute ago who is uh, leading the ICU and he was defining this as D-Day in a way and I think it's very appropriate. appropriate. This is D-Day for this fight. It is a victory. It is a necessary step and a positive step. We have not won the war yet, but we know we will. And so it, it should bring hope, but there should also be a reminder for everybody in the community that we're not through with this. And it's gonna take a while for these vaccines to be available to everybody in the community for there to be enough production of the vaccine so that everybody can get it. So we're working very hard, the mayor and I, with our counterparts at the state, uh, with our counterparts uh, all throughout the community to make sure as soon as those vaccines are ready that they go out to every member of this community. But you just can't produce them all at once. And so for now, we have to honor these healthcare workers. We are glad to see they are protected. And then for our part, to make sure that we don't continue filling their hospitals, uh, that we don't continue seeing the losses we've been seeing, it's imperative for folks to remember that we are not through with this uh, yet. And while there's hope on the horizon, folks still need to get tested. Folks need to cancel gatherings. Uh, folks need to make sure and wear their face coverings. We're gonna get through it. We're all exhausted, but we're nothing if not resilient. And so what a joy to have a cause for celebration this year. Truly, we needed that, uh, but let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Judge, it's good to be with you again, uh, but this time we're not giving numbers uh, and letting people know how many people got the virus, how many people died. Uh, it's a bigger, you know, it's just a different celebration today. Dr. Boone, let me thank you for your, for your incredible leadership. And uh, to all of these doctors and nurses, uh, look, I never thought uh, that I would be excited about seeing arms with Band-Aids on them. <laughs> And uh, quite frankly, you know, get the flu shot and all of that. And very, very seldom have I looked to see somebody actually get a shot. 
This is one of the first times that I actually just looked and, uh, and excited by what I was seeing. Uh, but this has been an unprecedented year. Uh, this has been a very painful year for so many families, a year of uncertainty for so many others. A lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of businesses have closed down. It's just been an, a, very, a, a very, very tough year. But when I walked in, uh, to the, just to the hospital and certainly into this room, uh, to feel the excitement and to see the smiles in people's eyes, even with the mask on, uh, and where we were not giving away, in a sense, gifts underneath the tree, uh, but uh, shots were being given, vaccines were being taken, and people were literally giddy. Um, it does say that even in the midst of a storm, uh, there's still a rainbow in the sky. And today, for the city of Houston and so many cities around the country, there's a rainbow in the sky. On Sunday, I, I had the privilege of being out there at City Hall, lighting the menorah as a sign of uh, light and hope. Um, and today, at this hospital, with many of these health care providers, it is another sign of light and hope in the midst of a year with so much darkness and sadness. And that's good news. So uh, let me just encourage people to just to hold on a little bit longer. Uh, people trust their health care providers. And let me just say that people trust their health care providers. And to see the health care providers uh, actually taking this vaccine and being excited about taking the vaccine uh, sends a positive message throughout the city of Houston. And so uh, let me thank you all, not only for being on the front line in terms of taking care of coronavirus patients, but also now being on the front line of getting this vaccine. And let me encourage other people uh, in the city uh, to also, when your opportunity comes, let me encourage you to take the vaccine itself. Uh, not to say no, not to delay, not to hold off, but when you're able to take it, please take it. Uh, because literally it can mean the difference between being in the hospital or not being in the hospital, living rather than dying. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm excited about the day. Thank you, science. Thank you to medicine. Thank you to technology. Um, thank you for the health care providers, all of you. Uh, and there are no big eyes or little U's. In Everyone, whatever position you may hold at this hospital, whatever position you may hold outside in the community, whether you're a firefighter, police officer, public works employee, working with the county, the city, a doctor, nurse, technician, it matters not. The point is, in this battle, we are all in it together. What a beautiful day in the holiday season where people can literally smile and be hopeful that 21 will be so much better than 2020. And therefore, I must turn to hip I proclaim 2020 gone. <laughs> 21 new. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Bill. Yes. Yes. What are they related to? Any questions to judge? Because I know she's got to go. Oh, yeah. She's got to finish her score, too. Sure. Okay. Um, this looks like it is from KBRC. Uh, they're asking, the county is still part of the Housing Stability Task Force to help create on June 12th. Say the task force has not made a single recommendation while houses have been evicted every week. In your view, is the task force working to do not it? Yeah, you know, we've got a, a city-county task force, or initially a, a, a joint task force, has got great leadership. And, in fact, they, there is a recommendation, I saw a letter come through this week, that we've acted on, and that is to shift some of the funds that we're going to just rental, rental assistance, and, and came with certain conditions, into direct financial assistance that can support renters, the same renters and that they can use for rent or they can use for groceries or they can use for transportation so look the
the reality of it is the key issue is evictions. Too many people have been evicted, are still being evicted. I had the authority to stop those evictions. That was one of the levels of authority that was stripped from me and other county judges uh, by the governor a few months back. And so what we can do is provide that aid. Uh, to date, Harris County has provided uh, almost over $990 million in direct financial assistance, including $30 million from the county coffers, uh, $66 million in CARES Act dollars, and we are also on track to provide $15 million in rental assistance. The task force is only as uh, helpful as the, the framework around it. In many ways, their hands are tied because of the state restrictions. Uh, but I think it's valuable to have those dialogues and some of the recommendations like this one about shifting the resources uh, more to direct financial assistance. The ones we can implement, we've implemented. Okay. Uh, they're also asking, um, why hasn't Harris County banned like Yeah, look, I, I wish I could. I wish I could. Early on I had the authority to do that. We worked it out with the JPs. Would they just stop hearing them at that point? Uh, now they have resumed some of them, and so what I've done ever since my authority was stripped is, is first offer these tens of millions of dollars in direct financial assistance to the, the most vulnerable community members, and second, plead with those justices of the peace to not hear the eviction cases. We are watching, of course, everybody wants to make sure the landlords are also doing okay. We, wanna, we were looking at, at the totality of the situation, but the reality of it is those that are being left out in the street and those that need our immediate help right now are these tenants that are unable to pay the rent. So we all need to work together. The county is doing as much as it possibly can, um, and, and we need the justices of the peace support. Uh, another thing that would help is for the Supreme Court, the Texas Supreme Court, to act and, and require those justices of the peace to stop evictions. They did that at some point, but that expired. So in fact, I sent a letter this week asking them to do that again. Okay, and I'm sorry. We've got to wrap it up. She's going to yeah. go back to court. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate Okay. See, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.